What is up, guys? Kid Critic is back with a third. That's right, numeral three. Three, that's right. The third episode of the Kid Critic podcast. Like, this is mind blowing. I feel like I'm already at a hundred. I'm already, I feel like I'm already at a hundred episodes of these things. It's crazy. Absolutely nuts. And we got a packed house today. You know why? Because we got the first reviews and reactions of Lion King. That is right, Lion King. We got we got some Spider-Man Sony stuff. Is Sony gonna take back Spider-Man? I don't know. Sure things. We got Sith Troopers introduced into Star Wars. We'll talk all about that. Um, the HBO Max. HBO is about to do their own streaming service called HBO Max. And I picked up a game. That's right. I picked up a new video game. That is right. So we got a packed house today. So without further ado. Let's start this podcast. What is up, guys? We are back with the third episode of the Kid Critic Movie Podcast, where we talk about movies and all that other fun stuff. Man, we're already on the third episode. Goodness. Goodness gracious. But anyways... Anyways, we got a packed house today, like I already said before. So let's start with the first topic. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is not movie related. It's not even pop culture related, but it's a thing that's like been trending this week. And I saw on the um, I forgot where I saw it actually. Uh, on Monday or Tuesday, I saw this, and it's basically. I think it's either a family or it was between two families or it was within one family. I don't know. I don't really read much into it. But there was a fight in Disneyland. Now, look, people say Disneyland's like the happiest place on earth, which is not very true because, you know, I don't really think I have to explain it, especially for people who have been to Disneyland. I mean, you see people have arguments. You see children crying. It is not the happiest place on earth. But... I love Disneyland. Anyway, so there's like a family fighting. And I'm watching this. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You spend a hundred dollars or more, more than a hundred dollars each ticket, and you end up fighting at Disneyland. It's like really, like that's a hundred dollars or more well spent. But I, it just made no sense to me. It's like, come on, people, come on, people, be smarter. And then I saw this hilarious comment on the video where somebody was like, oh no, they're going to higher up the prices for tickets because they're going to need more security. Oh, <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing at that because obviously Disneyland's known for raising up their prices. And it's just going to get to a point where the only person going to Disneyland is Bob Iger because he's the only one that can afford Disneyland because he can get in for free. That's the only person going into Disneyland because it's just getting that expensive. And it's like mind blowing and it's just crazy. And then you add on to that this thing that i saw with this guy at the at this bagel shop who was like yelling at these people now what i've heard i actually i actually feel bad for this guy on on this story i feel bad for this guy and here's why so he thought people were laughing at him because it was shortness but it really wasn't and then this guy stepped and he started yelling at these girls and a guy stepped in and just tackled them out of nowhere and but tried to calm him down and I, f- I feel bad for this for this guy. Now, what he, was what he said right? No. But I feel bad for this guy because you never he, he's probably been bullied all of his life because of his height or his shortness. And he probably just let it all out. It's probably like misdirected anger, I'd say. So, yeah, you got the dub- that those things. It's like, ugh, come on, people. Bring it together. Bring it together. But anyways, yeah, I saw that. Let's move on from that. I picked up something today. Um, This week, not today. This week. I picked up a new game. That's right. I picked up a game that came out last year. It was nominated for Video Game of the Year. It did not win, however. And that is Red Dead Redemption 2. Now. I, it was it's 50% off right now, and I'm like, yeah, I'll play this. It looks pretty good. I love me some Western action, and I'll say this. I, either though I've had it for like two days, I won't be surprised in a week or so if I say it's one of my favorite games I've ever played. Because 
it's, it's just beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful games I've ever played. Just the open world. It is so immersive. And the graphics, like, it looks real. It look, it's stupid. It looks so real. And it is amazing. All the things you can do. It's like, what? The map is humongous. Now, Rockstar, who made this game, obviously made the first one. And has made the GTA series. Which I love because GTA 5 is another one that is one of my favorite games of all time. And I won't be surprised if Red Dead Redemption 2 ends up beating GTA 5. Because that's how much I'm loving this game. It's basically GTA but in the wild, wild west. And I love it. It is so good. It is hardcore, gritty. I'd love to see a movie made out of this game. these games. I haven't played the first one. I, I know it's a prequel and I know some of the story of it. But that would be awesome if they made it into the movie. But, you know, we've seen the video game Curse. We saw it with almost every movie i mean you could say detective pikachu kind of killed the curse but i mean who knows i mean i quite like detective pikachu and i like i and that's really it to be honest but that would be so awesome and the game is fantastic you can hunt you can um be a bounty hunter the missions the the campaign so far is awesome and i know i've heard people say oh it's slow all you do is ride a horse Look, if, the, if if the world just looked awful, I would I would have agreed with that. But it doesn't. It looks amazing. I don't care. I can ride the horse the whole day. It is amazing and I love it and it's ah, oh, it's amazing. Just one of my favorite games of all time. If you haven't played it, you got to get you got to play it. It is a fantastic game. Now, something else that came out, and we're now heading into the movie stuff, and that is, well, I forgot who it was. It Entertainment Weekly? I don't know. I think, let me see. I think Entertainment Weekly released the pictures, but who cares? Um, of new, of Sith Troopers that are being introduced in Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker, which, by the way, I've actually warmed up to that title. Actually, I don't love the title, but I actually like the title. But anyways, I, th I think the title's pretty good. So they're going to introduce the Sith Troopers into Star Wars Episode Nine, which, to my guess, are going to guard a Sith. Now, what Sith? I mean, Snoke was... I don't think he was considered a Sith, but he's, Sith, but he's dead. I, I don't... Kylo Ren is not a Sith. The Sith are gone. So my guess is that... So obviously, Palpatine's going to show up, obviously, because Ian McDermott came out on stage for Star Wars Celebration. Um, Palpatine's laugh came on in the teaser, and if he just doesn't show up, it's just a crime. It's just a crime to humanity if if Palpatine doesn't show up in in, in Episode Nine. So my guess, since he's gonna show up, uh, he's not. He's gonna he's gonna be like in that hologram form that that we saw from Battlefront Two, as my guess. And I feel like when they find when Palpatine shows up in that form. There's going to be Sith Troopers guarding it. And if, like, when they, because they obviously find a piece of the Death Star that we saw in the trailer. And if he show like, if he's in there, I can imagine him in the hologram form. And then these Sith Troopers and then Rey and Poe and Finn have to battle it off. That's what I'm kind of thinking is going to happen. Now, as far as the look of them, I think they... I mean, if you just told me Sith Troopers are going to be introduced in Star Wars Episode Nine, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I cannot wait to see what they look like. I got to admit, I was a bit underwhelmed. They're, they don't look like, oh, my God, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. No, I mean, they're red, which is, I mean, I love red. It's my favorite color, so I don't mind that. And they're basically stormtroopers. They look just like stormtroopers. They're red and their torso is like a bit skinnier. And that's it. I mean, they look fine. But I wish they look better because it's Sith troopers. I mean, come on. I mean, that's me. I don't know. Maybe you guys loved it. But yeah. But anyway, speaking of Star Wars, last week I watched The Force Awakens again. And I love The Force Awakens. I adore that movie. It's... I struggle whether or not I put it above A New Hope and third, because right now how I rank my Star Wars movies, I have Last Place, Attack of Clones, which I absolutely hate, and then I have Phantom Menace, which I don't like, but definitely has some good parts. I think all the prequels have some good parts, but I do not like the first two at all. Revenge of the Sith, however, while it's not the best movie, I'll say that, there are some goodness awful scenes in that, but... And thank goodness, Jar Jar was in like 10 seconds. But 
Revenge of the Sith. I actually like a good amount of Revenge of the Sith. It's not. How should I explain? I, I like Revenge of the Sith. I actually am one of the rare people who likes Revenge of the Sith. It's not great, absolutely not. There's some horrible moments, but the, I actually like Revenge of the Sith. So then I have Revenge of the Sith, and then I put, I probably put Solo, and then I put Last Jedi, and then Rogue One, and then Force Awakens, f maybe, and then A New Hope, and then I struggle between Empire and Return of the Jedi, but... Yeah, that's how I rank them. I just struggle between them. But anyways, I watched Force Awakens. I absolutely love the movie. And then a couple days ago, I watched the first hour or so of The Last Jedi. And while I like the movie, I don't love the movie. I don't love Last Jedi. I, I don't like it. But it's just, like if I were to rate it out of five Fernies, I'd probably give it like a three and a half out of five Fernies. But something just feels off. Like, because if you take the original trilogy, they go together like nothing. They go together perfectly. The original trilogy, don't touch it. I mean, take out the special edition stuff and just give you the original stuff. But they just go together so perfectly. But something about Last Jedi and Force Awakens, if you were to put them together, I feel like it wouldn't even come together. I don't, it just feels off to me. And again, while I do like The Last Jedi, I feel like... They could have taken that movie to a whole other level. I feel like there was some great potential. Because there was. There absolutely was some great potential for that movie to be one of the best, if not the best, Star Wars movie of all time. And while I did like the movie, it absolutely was not. That. Like with Snoke, for example. While the throne room scene in Last Jedi was amazing... There could have been great potential there for Snoke. He could have been, I mean, not the next Palpatine, but like, or better, you know? But there was just so much great potential for that movie. But for some reason, that Last Jedi and Force Awakens just don't connect together for some reason. It just feels so weird and discombobulated. And another example I'll give, like... I did like what they did with Luke. I know most people didn't, but I, I did like what they did with Luke. While it was not what I was expecting, I did like what they did with Luke. However, I just feel that you could have done something. Not like you can always make something better, but I feel like you you miss an opportunity there with Luke. Like I can I can feel I feel the force. I can feel that you could have done something absolutely mind-blowing with Luke. Now, I know everybody, including me, wanted that lightsaber fight between, I don't know, Luke and Kylo, or that fight between Luke and Snoke, and I absolutely would have loved that, and I still wish they did that. Again, they had so much potential to do so much great stuff. Now, while I do respect that Ryan Johnson made his own movie, and that was his story, and I do respect that, but... It's just there's so much great potential there for The Last Jedi. I know I'm opening up a can of worms when talking about Last Jedi. But there is just so much potential there that I was just like, Oh, you're right there. You're right there. Like, most people talk about the cancel bite stuff, how that didn't work for them. Now, while it's not my definitely not my favorite part of the movie, it's I don't dislike that part of the movie as much as other people do. But if you could have used something better... Instead of the Canto Bite stuff. Because while I don't hold, just hate on that part of the movie. You just could have done something better. I feel like. Ah. It's just like right there. And it just irks me. And I'm very curious to see how Rise of Skywalker turns out. Well as you guys know. I love the teaser trailer for Rise of Skywalker. And I cannot wait to see it. But anyways. With that said guys. We got some sad news. To talk about. Uh, an actor has passed away this week. Rip Torn has passed away this week. Obviously known for his role in Men in Black in the first two. He is absolutely brilliant in the first two Men in Black movies. Now you can say what you want about Men in Black 2. But he's absolutely the standout of that movie. Uh, well, he's one of the standouts of that movie. Same thing for the first one. He is absolutely brilliant. And he's obviously known for Dodgeball. If you could dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. And obviously he's known for those films. And... It, it, when I found out he died, I'm like, 
Rip Torn, Rip Torn died. Uh, he was in his 80s, so he lived a long, I'm sure, prosperous and good life, obviously. But anyways, I just thought I would include this because you know Rip Torn is brilliant. Rest in peace, Rip Torn. Now to move on to, I don't know if you could call this happy news, if you'd say, but I saw some headlines a couple days ago that said... Is Sony going to take back Spider-Man if Far From Home does not make a billion dollars? Question mark. And I saw them like, <laughs> really? I mean, it's a foregone conclusion already that Spider-Man's going to make a billion dollars. It's already made $600 million, which is absolutely crazy in one week. And it's definitely going to be the first Spider-Man movie to reach a billion. Now, let's say it didn't. No way. Absolutely no way. And I could be totally wrong, but there's absolutely no way Sony takes back Spider-Man if it doesn't make a billion dollars. Because other than Far From Home, no Spider-Man movie has ever made a billion dollars. Were they successful? Absolutely. I mean, you've had Spider-Man movies that made in the $700 million range, $800 million range, close to that $900 million range. But it, no, it does not. This just makes no sense. And plus, the, Sony makes double the money with their Sonyverse and the MCU. And if the Sonyverse continues to make the amount of money that like a Venom has been made, with how much did Venom make? $800 million plus? And plus, the, the MCU, where the Spider-Man movies have been absolutely fantastic and I made tons of money, then why why would you want to take Spider-Man back if you're making double the money? Um, people are liking it, while critics are going to love Venom. Most people really had a great time with it. I, I'm still mixed with Venom. I definitely good. Like, I had to say the same thing I would say was... I. I kind of relate Venom with Suicide Squad, where I liked Venom, I did not like the movie he was in. Like, I liked the Suicide Squad, I just didn't like the movie they were in. But p people uh, people really enjoyed it, and obviously everyone's loving Far From Home, same thing, everybody loved Homecoming, and Spider-Man's one of p p the best characters in the MCU, according to a lot of people, and probably in my opinion as well. So I don't, see, I don't know why they'd do that. It just makes absolutely zero sense. Now, it's now this report comes from like the Ankler or something, like another news website. But I mean, I don't really believe this stuff. But I just thought I'd talk about because I found it to be very interesting. And no way. <laughs> No way Sony takes back Spider-Man unless he starts, you know, people are like, oh, Spider-Man or the movies start to fail, which is kind of hard to believe for a Spider-Man movie to fail. But anyways, yeah, Sony's not going to do that. To move on to some more news, um, Lion King reviews. Lion King reviews are out now, when the reactions first came in after the premiere and the first screenings, it, it was off the charts. People were loving it. As it was, you saw like a couple sort of negative reviews, but all of the reactions coming out of the movie, even for people who didn't like it, said the visuals are fantastic. I mean, what do you expect? John Favreau pulled off Jungle Book, and the visuals in that movie were absolutely fantastic like you've never seen before, and people are saying that The Lion King is just absolutely game-changing, that's what I've been hearing, which, I mean, the trailers even showed that, but just because visuals look great in the trailer doesn't mean it's going to look great in the whole entire movie, but I, then more and more reviews came out, and the more and more negative it started to become, because let's look at the run to me score really quick L last time i checked which was yesterday the score for lion king was at 57 now it's at 59 with 109 reviews so it's still like a lot more reviews to come not as many like probably not like no no maybe 100 more reviews to come now i when i saw that i was like wait what because in my now i'm sure that's not for everyone, but I'm sure for most people that if this movie was to basically copy the whole entire original movie beat by beat, I, I would be satisfied. I really would be satisfied. But what I've heard that he's in, that he that it's the same story. It's the same everything except for like a couple of parts of the movie that he changes up a little bit. Now I've actually heard those parts are pretty good. So 
I don't know where this movie went wrong for a lot of people. I didn't read a lot of reviews. I don't like to read a lot of reviews for movies up coming up, just so like I can go in with like nothing in my brain going into the movie. Now I'm seeing it next week, Thursday night in IMAX, and I cannot wait because you know IMAX is the way to see this movie. It was all those spectacular visuals, the music. Oh, it's great, and I also heard Chiro Telegi for his fantastic as score, and he sounded great as score in the movie. So, with that said, guys, yeah, I was kind of bummed that the percentage score on Rotten Tomatoes was low, but everything's subjective. Who knows? But, I mean, Aladdin has, like, a 57%. I love Aladdin, and most audiences love Aladdin as well. So, yeah. So, let's move on to the next topic. Now, I watched a movie on Netflix the other day, and it's called beats on netflix and it's a bit the premise of it is basically this kid who has ptsd over a traumatic event i did not see the trailers before seeing the movie by the way which i actually think is a good idea to do to just go into the movie but basically the premise is that there's a kid who has ptsd over a traumatic event and the only way he's really able to treat it is by listening or making music now i love that premise and you also have anthony anderson in there who i love obviously known for blackish but i also like him in the dramatic roles as well and the main kid who i might butcher his name is khalil everidge who is absolutely fantastic in the movie now netflix is known for not having the greatest of all movies but going into this movie i'm like all right i'm, I'm in i'm in i love this movie beats is just fantastic anthony anderson's really good in the movie but kind of, he plays the mentor basically of the main kid the premise is great the relationship between anthony anderson and khalil everidge is just it's that's the thing that carries the movie basically and the opening scene it's it starts off as like oh, all right so they kind of they're showing where the characters are at but then something happens i was just like oh I'm in. It just made my mouth drop through the floor all the way down to the earth's crust to the core. Oh, it was so good. The movie is powerful. The acting is just fantastic. Now, I do have a couple of issues. They're not the biggest issues. Now, obviously, every movie is going to have issues. But I love Beats. Make sure to check it out on Netflix. It is fantastic. I absolutely love the movie. But anyways, that's what I, one of the movies I saw this week. What movies are coming out this weekend? So we have Crawl, which I hear is fantastic. Right now, last time I checked, it has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Let's check. I actually like the trailers, though. It has 91 now with 55 people. So that's pretty good. That's 89 with 55 people. So that's actually really good. I hear it's a fun 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 movie and i actually like the trailers and some people didn't i actually really like the trailers because this looked like a total blast and i was like alligators attacking people <laughs> heck yeah i'm in you also have stuber which i hear is a bit of a disappointment however it does have some good moments so i might go watch that but i'd probably go watch crawl instead because that just looks like a blast to see so if i do go watch it make sure to look out for my review for cr either crawl or Stuber. Now, those are the movies coming out this week. Now, some other news. So, this is a big one. This is a big piece of news. Now, a couple weeks ago, we talked about um, The Office getting pulled off of Netflix. And Netflix is, and I said Netflix has been preparing for this. All these streaming services are coming. Well, guess what? Another streaming service is, is coming, and that is HBO is making their own streaming service called HBO Max. And you know, when I actually talked about off the office being pulled off i said that netflix's two biggest shows is the office and friends and netflix spent like a hundred million dollars for the rights of friends which is absolutely nuts and it's one of their biggest shows that so kind of paid off literally kind of paid off so and then hbo's taking friends now the content on hbo max now big little lies is also going to go on there which is hbo's the probably biggest show after game of thrones but some of their content coming up looks absolutely fantastic. The f um, there's let's see here what's gonna be coming up. 
Now you got some great stuff. You have Stephen King's The Outsider, which is obviously based off of Stephen King novel. I've never read this one, which is a dark mystery starring Ben Mendelsohn, who is brilliant. I absolutely love Ben Mendelsohn. And then produced and directed by Jason Bateman, which sounds amazing. You have Lovecraft, Love, Lovecraft Country, a unique horror series. You got me there. I love horror. Based on a novel by Matt Ruff, written and executive produced by Misha Green. And executive produced by Jordan Peele and J.J. Abrams. I mean, come on now. How much involvement did the two have in this series? I don't know, but that's the reason why you get big names. is to grab more people's attention. And they definitely got my attention because that sounds amazing. You also got The Nevers, which is Joss Whedon's new science fiction series starring Laura Donnelly, which sounds absolutely great. I love Joss Whedon, obviously, for The Avengers. And I actually really like Age of Ultron as well. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. You have Avenue 5, which is a high satire about a space-bound cruise ship from Armando Lanucci, starring Hugh Glorie and Josh Gad. That sounds really good as well. Let's see what else you got here. You got The Underdog, a psychological thriller. Oh, I love psychological thrillers. From David E. Kelly, who is known for Big Little Lies, directed by Suzanne Bier, who directed Bird Box, which is another movie I liked, with Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant. There, you sold me. You sold me right there. Let's see what else you got. You got the plot against America. Oh, I've heard about this. The reimagined history based on Philip's Roth novel, written and executive produced by David Simon and Ed Burns, starring Renona Ryder and John Turturro. I always messed up his last name for some reason. But you get them two in there. The premise sounds amazing. I've heard of this before, and I cannot wait to see this. You also have Perry Mate. Perry Mason, the classical legal drama of, for a new generation, executive produced by Robert Downey Jr. and Susan Downey, obviously his wife, and Math- Matthew Reese in the title role. Now, how, how much involvement did they have in the movie? I don't know, but that also sounds great. I mean, you have all this great stuff. You have this other drama with Mark Ruffalo in there. That sounds amazing. I love Mark Ruffalo. He has just so much great stuff, and again... The streaming wars is here, folks. It is here with Disney Plus, Netflix, HBO Max, ESPN, CBS, Warner Brothers. It is mind blowing. They obviously have their existing content, and I. This sounds just I'm really good. I mean, the shows I just listed off there just sound brilliant to me, and I mean, it is absolutely insane it comes in the spring of 2020 now how is how is netflix gonna suffer absolutely because friends is their biggest show one of their biggest shows with the office on netflix which and they're both being pulled off but like i said before they've been preparing for this i mean you look at their original content they have a bunch of original content i saw a report on how many people were getting their subscription subscription back for Stranger Things, which is an amazing season. And then they're making this new movie with David Fincher and Gary Oldman that sounds amazing. That's about the, the screenwriter for um, um, Citizen Kane. And it sounds amazing. I mean, they've been preparing for this. They have their stuff. You also heard reports that they're going to spend less money. On original content. Now that doesn't mean anything. I mean I'm sure they're going to put a lot of effort. Into their original content. Especially right now. Because right now is the time to do it. Because most of their stuff. Is going to come to the point where they're going to have to like. Bring out all guns. And just be firing on all cylinders. Now is Netflix going to be the king. In five years or so. I don't really think so. I think it might go to Disney Plus. It might go to HBO Max. Now, I don't know how much HBO Max is. I think they announced it, but let's see here. No, 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 no. I don't see anything, but it also says featuring 10,000 hours of premium content from HBO, Warner Brothers, New Line, DC Entertainment, CNN, TNT, TVS, True TV, The CW, Turner Classic Movies, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, Crunchyroll, Roster Teeth, Looney Tunes, and more. I mean, come on. Come on, look at that roster. That is just, it is mind-blowing. I mean, we're in a new age of streaming services now. And it is absolutely crazy. It's going to be very interesting how this thing plays out. 
And again, it's getting to a point where streaming services are going to be more expensive than cable. So we'll see what ends up happening. Now, I think HBO is very smart on doing this because they see, oh, man, streaming services are the thing. Now, HBO has been around for a long time, and they're like, oh, man, we need to be a part of this action. And they realize that they can probably do very well when it comes to streaming services. But what I'm saying, I think they'll do absolutely well, especially at the market very well. I think it's going to be great, and will I get this? I don't know. Who knows? But, yeah, so HBO Max, that was one of the big news this week, and they also got Suicide Squad 2 has a new cast member coming in hot. A, the actress who plays the, who's the lead in A Wrinkle in Time, and I didn't see A Wrinkle in Time mainly because I heard it was just an abomination which kind of sucks, but to be honest, the trailers didn't really get me either. And Storm Reed, Storm Reed is her name. She got casted to play Idris Elba's daughter. Now, it's also been debunked that Idris Elba's not going to play Deadshot, but who knows who he's going to play that might make a character for him. And now, this Suicide Squad 2 has done a... This... I, I, didn't, I, I didn't think I was going to be this excited, because when you have Idris Elba in there, obviously James Gunn, I can't wait to see what he does with this movie. And then you have Storm Reed in there, who I actually heard was actually a standout of A Wrinkle in Time. Not, I don't know how much of a role she's going to play in this movie. I don't know, but Warner Brothers and DC and Walter Hamada have just done a great job of putting more confidence into their universe. Because before, like when Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad were coming out, it felt like they were rushing things, and that's when they encountered a lot of problems. Now it feels like they're taking their time, they're putting out these movies, they're putting more effort, more confidence, and you've seen that in the early screenings, like for Aquaman and Shazam, and they've turned out to be pretty solid movies, and the audiences have loved it, either though Shazam didn't make the most amount of money, it was still profitable, obviously Aquaman made a billion, and then next year you have Wonder Woman 84, and Suicide Squad 2 comes out 2021, I believe, and also Birds of Prey. Well, we and then you have Batman being sh- shot very soon. Th- the only movie that they've had problems with is The Flash, and Superman's been unknown, and nobody's talking about Cyborg. But they've just been doing such a great job of putting more confidence into their stuff because that's the thing Marvel's done. They've had confidence in their stuff, whereas before they were with DC, they were, I think it was like for Batman v Superman where they lift up their embargo like a couple days before the movie came out, which is usually a big red flag that your movie probably stinks. So I think this is a, I think they just deserve deserve an applause for their work. I mean, they've had two in a row. I mean, for me, I've liked all the movies in the DC universe except for Suicide Squad. Like, I love Man of Steel. Man of Steel is so underrated, and I wonder if the movie have came out today would have been would more audiences love the movie more more critics enjoy the movie i don't know but i love man of steel i actually quite like batman v superman again i talked about suicide squad 2 ad nauseum this episode i said suicide squad while they were good i did not like the movie they were in and then you also had what was after that you had wonder woman I loved Wonder Woman, and then you had Justice League, which I had fun with. I actually prefer Batman v Superman over Justice League, and then you have Aquaman, which I had a fun time with, but I actually probably prefer Batman v Superman as well over Aquaman. They have Shazam, which I had a pretty solid time with, and then you have Wonder Woman 84. Now, something that does, well, while Warner Brothers is not going to be at Comic-Con this year, which is coming up next week, and... Let me look at the panels really quick, cause I know Marvel's is gonna be Saturday night. Now, speaking speaking of Comic Con next week, I have an announcement. Next week, the Kid Critic podcast will not come out on Friday. It will come out either Saturday night or Sunday morning. And the reason why is cause I want to cover all the news. Cause if Marvel announces Phase Four, I'm not waiting till the week after to talk about Phase Four. I want to wait. I'm going to, like, as soon as that panel's over, I'm going to hop on here and talk all about it. So, the Comic-Con schedule, I know Terminator is going to be Friday as well. Now, I have a feeling they're probably going to release a new trailer, because when does it come out? September, November, or something like that. So, that's also going to be there. I mean, Comic-Con this year, while it's not, like, packed, because Warner Brothers isn't going to be there with DC, which I'm... 
I was actually really surprised because they have Joker. Either though it's not going to really be a part of the DC universe. And you also heard Todd Phillips come out and say that Joker's not going to really, really be a part of... It's not going to be like like the comics, which I don't really care, to be honest with you. I don't really care for comic book movies, just like the comic. Either though it's called the comic book movie. Now, I, I think it's... I've heard some, I heard somebody say this. I was actually smart of Todd Phillips to do that because so that way he has it out in front so that way people can't complain. Oh, this wasn't like the comic book. I, uh, didn't you hear that he said that like a couple months back? But I'm surprised that Warner Brothers isn't there because they have Joker coming up. He got Wonder Woman 84. I don't know how much they've shot about shot that movie. But I'm sure they could have shown some footage, especially if James Gunn showed some footage for Guardians of the Galaxy two weeks into production. Now, who knows? And I'm very, very excited. I love Comic Con weekend. It is great. Well, I'm not going this year, sadly, because, you know, it's still down. But... I cannot wait because I'm definitely going to watch the panels, but it's not, you also have, It Chapter 2 is the only one going to be there, they actually had some announcement poster that said, we're coming back, scared Diego or something like that, so it is going to be very, very interesting, now who do I think Marvel's going to pull, I know I'm jumping all over the place, now who do I think Marvel's going to bring out, now Kevin Feige is obviously going to be there, to be honest, huh, I mean, they might talk about some of the Disney Plus's shows, but I have a feeling they might reserve that for D23. Because remember, D23 is only a couple weeks away in Anaheim, right? Isn't that is D23 always in Anaheim? I know last year was at Anaheim, but I, mm, I've heard some people say Robert Downey Jr., which eh, I, don't, I don't really think so. I mean, oh man, who did they bring out? Maybe Scarlett Johansson for the Black Widow movie. I have a feeling that they might show some footage for the Black Widow movie, especially that they've been shooting, but they didn't show any of that. They might even release a trailer, which I think it's not smart because it's so far away. I have a feeling that this is, they just mount an, announced Phase 4, and that's literally all you need to do to take over Comic-Con. Now, you may be asking, what are my predictions for Phase 4? What movies are going to be for Phase 4? Now, we've already had some confirmations. Doctor Strange 2 is obviously a confirmed one. Scott Derrickson is coming back. Black Panther 2, obviously. Brian Coogler is also coming back. You have Black Widow, which has been shooting. You have The Eternals, obviously. Richard Madden. You also heard some stuff that Millie Bobby Brown might be cast in there. You have... Yeah. You have Sang-Chi. Sang chi right? Sang-Chi. You also have that... And Captain Marvel 2, possibly, maybe a Spider-Man 3, and then Avengers 5. So, yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking for the Phase 4. So, while I am excited to see what it's going to be in Phase 4, I can kind of already tell what it's going to be. But I have a feeling. I have a feeling that he's just going to announce something that is just going to be out of nowhere. That is just going to drop bombs, and people are going to be talking for days and days to come after that panel. And it's going to be very interesting to see what Marvel does with their panel. So, that, yeah, guys, that is it. That is it for episode three of the Kit Critic Movie Podcast, where we talk about movies and all that other fun stuff. We talked about some interesting things. We talked about the Sith Troopers. What 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 are they gonna play into episode nine? We talked about some little fights and encounters at Disneyland, and obviously that bagel store stuff. That's like absolutely everywhere and it's just we already covered that we talked about rip torn sadly passing away we talked about the lion king reviews we talked about the movie beats on netflix you gotta see that movie that movie is so good i don't know i think it is in my top 10 movies of the year i don't know where it's at i talked about red dead redemption 2 being one of my favorite games of all time that game it is absolutely glorious i don't know how they do it i just don't know how they do it. Rockstar Games is just pat themselves on the back. I know it's kind of old news. Red Dead Redemption 2 came out last year. Come on, man. We talked about HBO Max. That's going to be interesting. We talked a little bit about Comic Con, Suicide Squad 2, and so on and so forth. Tell me down in the comment section below or comment down wherever this is on Spotify iTunes or so on as Spreaker. Comment down below what are your thoughts on the topics we ran down. I thought this was a pretty solid episode. I thought it was pretty And also comment down below how can we make this podcast better? What was amazing about this episode of the podcast? I mean obviously everything was amazing. I don't think you can say anything was wrong. But anyways, don't forget to share this podcast, like, 
follow it, subscribe if you're on the Kid Critic channel, but if, but if you're not, make sure you subscribe on the Kid Critic channel. I upload, I don't know, four videos, I don't know, it depends what, what comes out that week. But anyways, look out for the next episode of the Kid Critic Movie Podcast where we're going to talk about Comic Con, I'm sure. Or, or subscribe to the Kid Critic channel where I post trailer reactions and reviews or I'm probably going to review Crawl and Stuber coming up. And yeah, guys, that is it for me today. Have a wonderful, wonderful day because I'm sure I'm already having a wonderful one just talking to you lovely people who love movies just like me so with that said guys look out for the next episode of the get gritty Mo- movie podcast where we talk about movies and all that other fun stuff and with that said guys peace <laughs>